The death of the Lord Jesus on the cross is uh, truly a sorrowful event in his life and in all the sacred scriptures. And from the moment of the Last Supper, we witness a buildup, a sort of crescendo of pain and anguish against Jesus and against his friends, uh, for his mother Mary and for all who believed in him. Uh, so much sorrow. It was like once he gave us the gift of the Eucharist at the Last Supper, it was as if there was this unleashing of so much sorrow and pain and anguish for Jesus and his friends. So many people had believed that Jesus was the Son of God. They witnessed his miracles and heard his authoritative teaching about heaven and about the mystery of God. And they believed that he had the power of God within him. So when he died on the cross, how many hearts were broken? How many people had placed so much hope in the Lord Jesus and witnessed his death or heard about his death and how, how much heaviness took over their hearts and weighed them down? The people who believed in Jesus, they were just like us. You know, we hear stories about them and we think that they were totally different, but they were just like us. They each had their own personal journeys, their families, their friends, their troubles, their, their challenges with with their jobs, with finances and health. And all of these people look to Jesus Christ as someone who would make things right for them, as someone who would fulfill their hopes and desires for a life of happiness. And they probably had heard a lot of stories about Jesus. The people who, who saw him die on the cross or heard about it had probably known a lot about Jesus. And if some of them had been old enough, they would have remembered stories they heard about his birth. They might have remembered the, the story about these angels who referred to the coming of Jesus as a great joy for all the people. Or they might have heard the angels had said when Jesus was born, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Maybe these people had remembered a story about the carpenter who was the foster father of Jesus and how he also had received a message about Jesus from an angel that this Jesus would save his people from their sins. Maybe when, when they saw the, mother, the Virgin Mother Mary standing at the cross of Jesus, they might have remembered the story about the angel Gabriel who told Mary that Jesus would be great, that he would have a kingdom and his kingdom would have no end. And then when they saw Pilate put that, that sign above the head of Jesus on the cross, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, they might have remembered the story about the wise men from the East, who when Jesus was born, came to him and said, we have come to pay homage to the newborn King. All of these stories about the coming of Jesus and his birth had filled these people with so much hope. And now they hear this very same Jesus say the words, it is finished. They probably felt in their hearts so much pain, so much brokenness, that maybe these words, it is finished, spoke to them a word that was negative, that everything is finished. This great joy for all the people that was promised by an angel to the shepherds, it's finished. This glory to God and peace to his people on earth, that's finished too. This message that Jesus was going to save people from their sins, it's finished, it's over. This idea that Jesus was going to have a kingdom that would have no end, that's finished. And the sense of wonder and awe that the Magi had when they looked for the newborn king, that's finished too. Those words of Jesus must have been so painful for the people. But you know, maybe you and I can relate to what they must have felt. They probably felt this sense that all is lost. Maybe in our own personal journeys, our own life experiences, we can relate to this sense of loss. But you know, if we ever have that sense of loss, that sense of everything seems to be ruined, it's all right. 
It's not the end. Because Our Lady experienced this loss, Jesus' mother. The apostles of the Lord Jesus experienced this sense of loss, the sense of everything being finished. And these are people that we would refer to as saints of God. And all the men and women and young people who believed in Jesus experienced this sense of loss when he died. And then down through the ages, people who believed in Jesus also would experience the sense of loss, the sense of it's all finished. Everything we hope for is finished. And yet, there is something more here. There's something more than just the destruction of everything good about Jesus. The prophet Isaiah said this, because of his affliction, he shall see the light. He will have his portion among the great. He shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. This prophecy was made many, many years before Jesus, and it attaches perfectly to what he experienced on the cross. There is something more here than just Jesus Christ and everything that was promised about him being defeated, and being finished. Somewhere in the teaching of Jesus, he once said, I am the light of the world. When you think of that image of the light of Jesus, in order for his light to have its greatest impact, it must go into the darkness. And that's exactly what we see on Good Friday. The one who said, I am the light of the world, he went right into the darkest thing that humanity could experience, injustice, evil, and death. One of the people who stood near the cross of Jesus and who had witnessed firsthand the darkness overcome Jesus was St. John the Evangelist. He witnessed right there on Good Friday the total loss of everything he had believed in about Jesus. He had experienced the weight of those words of Jesus, it is finished. And this St. John would one day write these words, the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. He witnessed the full weight of darkness and he came out of that saying, the darkness is fading away and the true light is shining. And that's the light of Jesus. Hey, brothers and sisters, the death of Jesus Christ that we think about so intensely today, each year, seems to be the victory of darkness, the victory of evil and of loss. But it's not that. It only seems like that. As we go through the different kinds of darkness and pain and loss in our own personal life's journey, or collectively in humanity, let us devote ourselves to the one who said, I am the light of the world. In this way, we shall experience what his good friend, St. John, once said. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.